All right, uh, ready to start? Thanks for coming down. It's a Friday afternoon, so last day as well. So it's an effort, I can understand that. But um, hopefully you will learn something good, something new, um, and something useful. There are some, sure, speak up, indeed. <laughs> um, hopefully that wasn't a pun. Can you hear me all right, by the way? All oh, right, okay, so that really was a, a request, not a speak up pun. Um, yes, I'll try to speak up. Um, so um, basically, this, um, this talk will uh, we'll go through um, a screen reader, which, uh, which basically allows people who can't see to use Linux in, a, in console mode. Um, what really the, uh, what that entails um, is some some really good or very cool kind of technical uh, things the, how it's implemented how it kind of uses some of the kernel facilities and we'll try to cover that as much as possible and um, and then we'll try to look at um, we'll try to look at um, some of the development process how it works and then we um, hit Q and A. Right, so what, oh, by the way, um, I prepared the slides um, in, a, in a way which made sense at that point, but I think um, when talking about things, I might jump between slides, so um, just excuse uh, the out of order uh, slides a bit. Right, so what is SpeakUp? Um, it's, um, it's a software that reads whatever is on console, so it allows you to um, use Linux um, in a console mode. Um, it doesn't work with X windows. And the way it uh, convention it normally works is you plug in a hardware synthesizer, speed synthesizer, to a serial port on your on your computer, and then you um, and then you let uh, speak up speak out through that serial port. So I'll quickly show you what those um, what what the hardware synthesizers look like. If the slides all come up. Right, so these are um, two hardware synthesizers. On left, you have um, one called Apollo, and then on the right, there's Double Talk, and in the middle, there's a USB to serial converter. As you can see, uh, they use um, RS-232 ports, so serial port communication. This is the standard for, uh, seems to be the standard for uh, speed synthesizer, hardware speed synthesizers, not software ones. And what they basically do is, um, they have a chipset that take in characters from the serial port, and then they speak out through the speaker. And um, whatever the speakers say, they will try to kind of, uh, whatever the characters say, they will try to speak out through, through the speaker. Uh, those characters, um, if, the, if they are Unicode characters and, and your hardware synth is equipped with the knowledge of Unicode characters, then it will speak that particular language as well. Um, so, um, so, and this is the standard way. Now there are newer hardware synthesizers which also use um, USB, so they are purely USB hardware synthesizers, but standard is still uh, serial. And with speak, speak Up, the key thing that SpeakUp does, which um, I don't know any other uh, software synthesizer or speed synthesizer that does, is uh, it starts speaking very early on during the boot. So you can uh, listen to all the boot messages um, before there's user space, before there's anything else. So if you're built speak up into your kernel, you can start listening to those messages. And, um, and if you're doing that, uh, you probably want to use serial port anyways. But um, this is not limited to, it's not a debugging tool, this is a accessibility tool, so it's, it's for general normal use as well. But, um, but it's just, it just makes um, it that much more robust if you're using serial port. Um, going back, so um, so that's um, that's uh, that's what it does. It, it basically uh, has two modes. It will read whatever is on screen, and then there is a set of keys on your key, um, that you can use to uh, control behavior of speak up. So you can tell it to stop, or you can tell it to go back a few lines and start speaking from there. Um, things like that. Uh, it's Linux only. It's entirely based in kernel, um, and if if you're using hardware synthesizer, then you don't even need user space. Nothing on user space, you know, works in kernel straight out through your hardware synthesizer, and you get all the information. But if you want to use a software synthesizer, something running in the user space, then it also exposes a, 
um, interface to the user space. Plus, there is some SysFS interface to control the behavior of, uh, behavior of the voice, really. Um, it's more like an end user thing where you can uh, control the speed, the pitch, um, those types of things from user space. But they are more configuration things. They are not functional, um, core functional, um, functional things. As it says um, in, in the board at the bottom, it starts very early in the boot and lasts until shutdown. It's the only speak. Uh, and and this, um, what this allows people to do is, um, if, if you can't see or if you have difficulty in seeing, you can actually use SpeakUp to compile your own kernel, for example, and debug it. And people do it. And when I was doing development for SpeakUp, um, I needed help from community because I didn't have all the speech synthesizers, and they were basically compiling custom kernels and testing out. So, um, and that also means that community, user community of SpeakUp is actually fairly kind of tech, tech savvy. They, you know, they understand things. They can actually do a lot of testing for you as well. Um, originally, it was written by a blind person, Kirk Razor, and this was uh, just his side project that he, that he did on the side. Um, it, it was more and much bigger, more, more you know, um, happening, more kind of active projects. Um, but he, um, he worked on this uh, in his own time. It was outside kernel for a long time, then went to staging around 2010. And after that, um, now we are at the stage in, after nine years that um, is on the verge of moving into out of staging into main kernel. So, um, and this is, this is kind of a turning point, and it's part of the reason why um, I'm here talking about it, to make, um, to hopefully um, get people to kind of know that this, this is a thing as well. Um, and this will be shipped with all, with the, with the mainline distros. Um, and given the, the special edge that this piece of software has over, over others, over other speech synthesizers, this makes it, um, it gives it, you know, there's, there's potential for it to become a dominant kind of um, tool in this area. Um, it used to be the case that people would um, either you know, connect external devices like I showed um, using a serial port, or they would put an ISA card. Now, I don't know much about ISA, ISA bus, um, but um, well, you'd basically uh, put an ISA card, and then that would provide you, uh, I see some, some people laughing in the back. Uh, if you, you plug in, um, and that would provide you, provide you with an extra serial port, so you do serial comms over ISA. Um, I guess it was precursor to PCI. Um, now it is um, TTY based, and um, uh, some of the work that's gone into it is basically instead of directly talking to serial ports, which is what it used to do before by using NB and OutB, it now um, uses TTY to talk um, to serial ports. Um, and um, it gets console content using proper kind of um, consoling keyboard content using proper kind of callbacks rather than um, doing it in a very haphazard way in a very uh, um, in a very kind of you know write, writing the whole plumbing to actually get input from keyboard or from what what's displayed on the console it uses <coughs> standard excuse me standard Linux functionalities to do that um, there is proper Unicode support as well now um, which means that as long as your hardware like I was saying if your hardware synthesizer um, understands Unicode yeah, understands the language that you uh, want it to speak out, then uh, then you're good to go. Um, in future, um, of course, we want to uh, complete the move into mainline uh, kernel out of staging, uh, fix some bugs. There's one bug which is doing rounds, which is um, garbled text. Um, the irony of this is that most of the de developers are not good users of um, SpeakUp, so it's not easy to uh, find and, and understand how ne how irritating those bugs can be. Uh, and, and to kind of um, to replicate them is also also a bit difficult, um, but the, this seems like a race condition. It, it happens on SMP systems. Um, there's a race somewhere, and uh, you know there's a, there's a bit of a hint where could, uh, the race could be further down in the slides, but it's hard to replicate. We don't know where the where the bug is coming from, um, and there are some new features that we want to um, uh, implement. USB drivers is one of the key things. A lot of new synthesizers are USB based. Uh, the downside of that is that you, uh, when you when you have built speak up into your kernel, then you would have the kernel would have to wait for USB stack to come up first, uh, for that to be initialized first before your speak up starts speaking. So if you are debugging a problem and it's USB stack coming up, then you can't use speak up for that, and you still have to then fall back to serial port. 
Um, there's USB auto load feature, which is basically an idea that as soon as you plug in the USB um, synthesizer, the drivers automatically get loaded and then they start um, and, and, and the thing starts speaking straight away. And this is unique because, um, as are some of the other things in Speak Up anyway, uh, but this is unique because um, there's no user space, there's no UDEV, so you know, Speak Up is purely kernel based, there's no user space, there's no UDEV, et cetera, to kind of load, uh, load the drivers and load the modules. So this has to be done inside kernel from the USB you know, code. You have, to, you, know, you have to put in some, some plumbing to kind of get the right modules loaded. Um, which will be an interesting challenge. It will be an interesting challenge to get, uh, to get it merged as well. Um, there needs to be internationalization of speak up messages themselves. So the messages that speak up itself speaks out, not what uh, you get it to read from the screen, but there are some things that speak up says them itself. So when it comes up, it says I'm, I'm, I'm coming up, and when you tell it to shut down, it tells you that I'm shutting down. Um, that kind of stuff, this, me this meta information that speak up conveys, that's all in English. So um, so that's some work that needs to be done as well. Uh, we don't have a prop, like a, you know, a standard kind of issue tracking uh, system. So there's this GitHub page uh, that you can go to for now, and you, you'll see all the work that is yet to be done. But this work is not an Im impediment for it to go into, uh, into mainline kind of out of staging. So this is just uh, things, these are things which need to be implemented um, in future. Right. Um, the overall architecture, I'd like to say that um, it's two parts, really. One is the core speak up engine, which is, um, which is the part that collects information from your screen, from your keyboard, and manages it and, you know, and deals with all the like, speech, um, you know, speech speed and tone and you know, how fast to speak and that kind of stuff. And then there's a device side of things, which basically um, talks to one of those different uh, synthesizers. So as we, as we saw, there, there the example of two synthesizers. There, uh, synthesizer, there are quite a few different synthesizers, and um, and there are per device drive, you know, per device there are different drivers. So so there's a core module speakup.ko, and then there's a speakup underscore, um, you know, the device name Apollo or Double Talk or whatever. Um, this is quite a bit of detail, but I'd like to first go to an overall view of the architecture and then come back, you know, we'll, we'll take a look at the slides, but we won't go into too much detail. Um, it would, it would, it will, um, put you in sleep. Uh, uh, so, but these slides are there for reference if you ever want to kind of find out a bit more. Yeah, so uh, here you can see, um, this basically captures most of the functionality, most of the architecture of SpeakUp, uh, at least a core part. So as you can see, there's, um, there are two sources of input for, for SpeakUp. There is um, console and there's keyboard, and um, they are, uh, Linux provides these callbacks, VT notifier call and uh, keyboard notifier call. And these, um, when you implement these callbacks, you basically capture data from these two different sources. Um, so uh, with keyboard notifier call, you basically capture every keyboard input. It comes to you first, and you can decide what to do with it, whether to render it on the screen, whether to take it as a command, which SpeakUp does, um, because SpeakUp also takes in commands. And then um, it puts it into a ring buffer, uh, which is implemented in a file called buffers.c, but it's only one ring buffer. And um, as you, as you might be uh, thinking now where the race condition was coming from, there's only ring buff one ring buffer, so uh, there is contention there, definitely. And then there's a, there's a kernel thread which picks characters from this ring buffer and then you know, throws, you know, pushes those out through, um, through the serial port. Um, oh, actually, it pushes it out to a device, the, the driver kernel module, so speak up. So up until now, we were under speakup.ko, and now, you know, with, uh, with this kernel thread, we are now getting into speak up underscore whatever the device name is, that, that kernel module. And, and that's where it then either does one of, does one of the two things, either uh, uses TTY layer to actually speak out to the device, or it uses um, serial IO, which is directly talking to serial portal using in-bean, out-bean. That's legacy, that's not, that's not the standard 
way to do things now, but it's just there because of those ISA um, card-based uh, synthesizers that people still use. Um, so it's only for legacy support. Um, when it goes through TTY IO layer, it basically goes to TTY layer using TTY struct, and then um, it uses some of the, it uses TTY IO ops, which is a set of callback functions that implement, you know, your, your driver would implement them for speak up to then talk to the serial port. Does that make sense? So, um, so TTY ops is a set of, you know, TTY functions, and your driver implements them, and then core speak up would call those functions at right times in the right way, which would then let TTY layer decide how to actually push those characters. So if your, um, if your device is connected over USB, it's a serial device, but connected to serial over USB. So if it shows up as slash dev slash TTY USB zero or something like that, the, uh, the handling of the fact that it's USB and not pure you know, RS-232 is done by TTY layer, which means that speak up is agnostic of what actual mechanism you're using to talk to the device. And hence, it is, um, hence it's abstracted away from physically you know, talking to a serial port or any other port. Um, so that's, that's all good. Normally, um, TTY is associated with a screen, you know, and kernel would write to TTY, which would then appear on a screen. Here, we're using TTY to talk to a device. That's all good. What if we want to get input back from the device? Um, and why would device want to talk back to, um, to the CPU? The reason it would want to talk back to the CPU is um, to tell the CPU that you're pushing too many characters for, for traffic control, basically. Tell, tell the CPU you're pushing too many characters, you need to slow down, um, or, or, and, and then tell it that, yeah, it's okay to send more characters. That kind of communication is important uh, for obvious reasons, but, um, but it's, um, it doesn't fit into TTY ops themselves, because they are, they are one-way traffic. Um, and for that, um, we use LDIS, line discipline. So line discipline in, in, in traditional kind of setup would would have different functionality um, on a screen. It would basically help you uh, decide whether you, wanna, uh, you want the line feed to be a carriage return as well or not, and, and where to you know, insert kind of line breaks and things like that. But it also has some callbacks to, uh, to get, to transfer data in the opposite direction of TTY. And this is um, the only reason why um, SpeakUp uses line discipline. So it's kind of a creative, it's not, it's not a non-standard use of line discipline. It wouldn't occur to you. I don't think anybody else does it that way. Um, so so that's, um, that's a TTY IO side. Serial IO is quite straightforward. It basically does out B and in B and, um, and, and, and lets whatever the implementation out B and B is. I don't think it will be able to do a USB over serial port. Uh, I think it requires a proper serial port only. And then finally, there is um, on the on your right hand side, there is uh, Speak Up Soft, uh, which basically opens a MISC device in the user space uh, slash dev slash soft synth, and then lets a user space software to deal with it. Um, so a, a read will be a read in the user space would push data to that MIS MISC device because it's a correct device, and then a write in the user space would then uh, give data in, uh, you know, send data into SpeakUp, um, as you can see here. Right, so we'll skim over some of the details here in the interest of time and um, in the interest of not boring you to death. <laughs> but feel free to ask any questions if you have afterwards. Um, so yeah, this is where we were. Um, so um, like I said, there's core and there's, um, there's device side of things and core basically consists um, of main.c, which is a file inside staging, speak up, uh, staging, drive, drivers, staging, and speak up. Uh, and then, and that's the root main, if you look at main.c, then you will work out what other files need to be linked in and how they are linked in. Um, and, it, and when it starts, it does a few things. It registers all these callbacks and um, it registers TTY line discipline as well and it initializes sysfs, which I, which I told you is more for configuration reasons, and then it spins up k-thread, which takes data from the buffer and pushes to, to a device. 
um, device architecture. There are two, um, we've already covered this part. There are two hardware devices, hardware synthesizers and software synthesizers. Um, software is the user space one that I was talking about. There's one more software synthesizer which we'll come to, which is quite interesting, which is unique. Um, these are the devices themselves. So um, one thing to note here is that hardware synthesizers are different products, but a lot of those products have same chipset. And the drivers obviously work with chipset, not the products. So um, you could have the same driver work for multiple products. That's the main thing here. Um, right, going forward. Speak up synth, SPK synth. That's the core data structure and the whole, um, and the whole setup here. Um, and this, uh, this contains many things, including these callbacks, right? And this is also the link between core speak up and the device, so it's, um, the, the device driver, dri device driver kernel module. Um, so um, if, if you notice here, there's um, catch up, a callback function called catch up. Catch up is actually implemented by speak up underscore Apollo or whatever, the device kernel module. And the core kernel module would call catch up to send data to, to that device kernel module. And that device kernel module will deal with it using TTY IO layer or, or direct serial comms. And, and there are others as well, uh, more to do with um, edge cases and, um, and you know, making sure that um, we're not getting out of sync, traffic control, stuff like that. Um, SPK IO ops, this is purely on the, on the device side of things. This struct is used by device only. And this um, would be familiar to you if you're familiar with TTY layer. So um, as you can see, there, there is um, the TIO CM set, um, which is used, normally it is used for traffic control. But in speak up, it is used for some edge case, because one of the devices, uh, one, of, one of the hardware sense, um, Apollo, um, sometimes stops working, and the way to get it to work again is to uh, um, assert and deassert um, clear to send line, which is the UART comms part, um, and you do it using TIO CM set. Um, but other than that, there is a synth out which basically sends data out, synth in, which pulls data in. Synth in is achieved using LDISC, line discipline. Um, synth in no wait is just uh, prioritizes the character coming in from, uh, from the device. Um, so that's, um, this, that's uh, no wait is equivalent of X in, if you know you are protocol. So X in is like uh, high priority characters coming in, uh, things like Telling, um, telling the other, other side, stop sending me data. I want to I wanna catch up with my buffers overflowing, stuff like that. Right. Um, the synth to CPU, this is a bit that I was telling you about um, the line discipline part. And the only thing that we use in line discipline part is um, this method called receive buff to, which is um, which is basically a way to receive data from the device into, into the CPU, into speak up, basically. Uh, there are other line discipline um, methods that we don't even touch. Right. I'll quickly touch upon this part, which I think is quite important, and then move on to development setup. Um, right, so um, speak up needs to speak um, very early on during boot. Now, when it was using in B and out B, that was quite straightforward to do. Um, you just write to a serial port. And you can do that, you can do that without needing any operating system, needing any support anywhere. But now that you're using TTY layer, the problem is that we need a TTY struct, right? And, and you need TTY struct which implements these uh, functions, these methods to talk to the device. The only way to get a TTY struct up until speak up was to open slash dev slash TTY USB from user space, and that would create, trigger the creation of TTY struct instance. That would then be used for all kinds of stuff. Um, 
the change that needed to be made for this, and there was no other way, was to actually um, open TT Vastrip from inside the kernel. So that involved basically creating um, a new API, TT underscore K open and TT underscore K close, which allows you to open TT Vastrip from inside the kernel. And that takes into account any synchronization issues with user space. So if you already have uh, TTY open inside kernel, then, uh, then you open it from user space and it would actually give you eBusy. That also meant that the interface between the AB app and kernel and user space changed a tiny little bit because um, normally when you open slash dev slash TTY S0 or whatever from user space, you never expect eBusy. You expect other problems, but not eBusy because it can't be. Uh, but in this case, kernels open is exclusive and, and hence it, it attends eBC. Um, other than that, it just basically starts speaking early on from root. And that's, I think, it, it, it can't be overemphasized. I, I've kind of mentioned many times, but I don't think that the importance of this can be overemphasized. Um, going on. So uh, like I mentioned, there are two types of uh, soft, soft distance sizes. There's, um, uh, speak of soft, which allows you to kind of speak to, uh, from kernel to speak to a, a MISC device, and then some user space program would read from there. And then uh, there's another one called speak up dummy. What that does is it just pushes characters to, um, to UART, raw characters to UART. It's, it's there for uh, testing and debugging purposes, and it's very, very useful for that. And the way to use it is to basically load it inside a VM, and then you point the, the serial port of the VM on the host to a file or to std out. So when inside the VM, uh, speak up underscore dummy pushes to a UART port, it comes out on a file on, on the host. And then you can post-process that output. So if you're looking for garbled text, you want to um, find out where the garbled text is happening, you, well, you don't need to listen to it all the time. What you need to do is just run this over a large amount of text on an SMP system, and then eventually you'll get garbled text, garbled text, and then you can, you know, scroll through the output and find it afterwards. It's very useful. Um, I use Pickup Dummy for most of the development, and a lot of people do it as well. Um, right, there's a lot of data here. Speakup Soft is basically um, a, uh, makes Speakup like any other spe screen reader. Uh, it's user space based, which means that you have to have user space up and running uh, for it to work. And this is how you'd use speak up underscore dummy. So um, this is one way to use it. Um, I don't do it this way. I, I use more evolved, kind of more involved system. But what you can do is uh, supply uh, dash serial to switch to QEMO and then point it to whatever file in, on the host, and then you load speak up dummy inside, inside your VM, and then um, you'll see the output. Um, there are no extra layers. This is very useful because you're not, you're not kind of going through any user space uh, bugs to find out what's going on here. And finally, to development process. I think we have a few minutes to cover this. I'll just quickly cover the most important parts of this. Um, so normally, it's any kernel kind of development process, like any, so you go through the reviews and everything, you submit patches, and you have to organize patches in, um, in a way that every patch compiles, et cetera, et cetera. But um, the key thing is that it's much friendlier. Um, Samuel, who's the current maintainer, um, doesn't write a lot of code right now, but he's very, uh, uh, he's very um, knowledgeable about things. In fact, uh, this idea of using TTY with, um, uh, and, and this creative way of kind of talking to devices and using line discipline was actually his initial idea, which we explored together, and I went ahead and implemented it. Um, so, so you get reviews before you submit it to wider mailing list, which is, I think, extremely good. It's good for your reputation as well, because you get to kind of put the patches in the right shape before you go out to the wider world. Um, and uh, like I said, community is very useful, uh, very helpful. Uh, they are very tech savvy, so um, they are willing to test. Um, they would compile custom kernels, whatnot, um, and they also help you giving, you know, getting devices to you. Um, so uh, one of the things that I use is actually um, borrowed. And I say borrowed. The person said, "You take it, keep it." I said, "No, I'll return it." But I've never actually got to return it. But um, 
and my mind just borrowed, but he's actually given it to me. Um, generally, uh, one thing to watch out is, um, yeah, so the way uh, normally you'd use it is using QEMU, um, and then use pickup dummy to do most of the development, unless you're developing a driver itself, then you have to actually have the hardware sent with you as well. Uh, one of the key things, uh, one of the things to remember is if you have a one hardware synth and you lose, load another driver, that might mess up your hardware synth. And that happened to me, and, um, and that's something to keep in mind. Um, other than that, well, these are things that we need, want to do, which, which is what we covered before as well. These are things that are coming up. So if you're, if you're ever interested in any, any contribution, this is totally community-driven. It's not... There's nobody funding it. It's, it's just, you know, somebody finds time and starts submitting batches and things move forward and then that person goes away, does his normal day job and uh, work stops. So, so if, you, if you ever find um, anything interesting or uh, you want to explore it a bit more, um, I'm sure there's plenty of work for that as well. And that's it. I don't know if you have time for Q&A. I think we've got a couple of minutes, but that's pretty much it. If you're still awake. So what are the big obstacles to getting into mainline? Right now, um, there is just one, which is documentation. Um, one of the key things was that it was talking to um, serial ports directly using NB and OutB. And that is, um, that is something that's been addressed with TTY. So the reason it wasn't being touched for a long time, so as you notice, it, was in, it came to stage in 2010 and stayed there until now, was because the, the acceptance of the fact that you can modify TTY layer and get all this stuff um, passed, it was difficult. But when I started working on it, surprisingly, things were, things were easy. There wasn't much to and fro. Um, Greg was quite helpful as well. So. Um, so there was understanding amongst the maintainers, so it kind of went through. Right? I guess that's it. Thanks a lot for coming down. <laughs> <laughs>